everybody. Peter of England here bringing you some news on a very interesting and very dramatic and catastrophic situation that took place in India on the 9th of November this year. The 9th of November was the date of the election nomination confirming that Donald Trump was in office or intended to be the president-elect. And what many of you might not realize that at that moment on midnight uh, of the 8th into the 9th New Delhi time, the President of India, Narendra Modi, a pal and a backslapping friend of people like Cameron and Hillary Clinton um, and other such world leaders, um, made a very important and dramatic announcement. What he did is, in effect, took out of circulation 87% of all available currency in India. He actually abolished the rupee 500 and the rupee 1000 banknote. Now, this was done under the auspices of trying to counter terrorism, uh, under the auspices of trying to eradicate the black economy, trying to make everyone in effect accountable for what they had or saved or were keeping under their mattress. Now, you might think, well, it's everybody's entitlement to keep money wherever they wish. They've attained it, they worked for it, they've won it. However they've come about uh, uh, um, accessing it is really up to them. However, Mr. Modi and the IMF thought different. Now, this is quite dramatic in the fact that India is the seventh largest um, nation in the world uh, for economic uh, GDP. Uh, with 1.2 billion people in its population, uh, it's quite dramatic because most of that population, I would say 80% of the population of India, are not in possession of bank accounts and they're not in possession of ID or any type of ID document. Now, why is that important? Well, the limits that were placed for the changing or conversion of the notes, if you could get them changed, was that you had to produce uh, at the bank a form of ID in order to get the notes changed. There was a limit also that was up to 2,500, and if you had more than that, then what happened, nobody seemed to know. The banks don't know, um, and the, the civil servants uh, in other regions didn't seem to know. The only outlook was that with the possibility of going to, I think, one of the things called the Bank of India, of which there are very few branches, um, travelling a great distance um, to get the notes, notes changed. So what this caused is gridlock. It caused a complete lockdown in India. Uh, the queues were hundreds and hundreds of metres long, people queuing from, well, 24 hours a day in the queue, like sales day in January, uh, to try and get a place in the queue to, to change the money. Um, so there were massive problems there. The price of gold rocketed from around about $1,200 to about $3,800. Three weeks later now, I think the black market official rate, if you could have an official rate on the black market, is gold's trading about $1,800 US dollars an ounce. So the situation is none of the businesses can operate, none of the taxi drivers could, could operate because there was actually no money flowing. Now why this has been done is for the pushing forward of the Kabbalistic agenda for a one world government and a one world currency. The IMF have done this to 1.2 billion people, so please don't for one minute think that the people who gave you World War I, gave you World War II, gave you Korea, gave you Afghanistan, gave you all other wars from Lebanon through Syria through to wherever, um, that they will they will hesitate, they will not hesitate for one second to bring this same dark deed to your door. Now what that means for everyone is that unless you have any ID, unless you are, uh, have money in the bank, then you won't be able obviously to trade or to spend. And also when this, this demonetization program breaks, it will be instantaneous without warning, just like it happened in India. And what this means is that all the money in your account, whether it's in the form of uh, cash deposits, whether it's in the form of unit trusts or other types of saving in cash accounts, will be frozen immediately. There will be no access to it because the plan
plan for the IMF is to introduce the one world currency, which is called the SDR, which I term satanically delivered ruination. Now, the SDR is on the cards, it is planned, it will come into being unless it can be stopped. And how it can be stopped is by people turning their attention to an alternative form of currency which allows the globalist agenda, the globalist bankers to go their way and for other people to choose an alternative unit of money which has nothing to do with the global banking agenda. Therefore, it will be transparent, it will be independent, and it will be unique in the fact that it's not theirs. So, this is something that the bridge zone involves. If you don't know anything about it, you need to find out about Weirbank, you need to find out about the bridge zone, you need to look into this quite carefully. Because one of the things that did happen, um, and was on the cards before Mr Modi, or President Modi, made this announcement, was the introduction of payment by phone, uh, India is one of the largest um, uh, nations in the world which spends or recharges and pays for small amounts of, 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 of bills and goods and services over a phone. Um, there is a company called PayTM, that's P-A-Y-T-M, bit of a takeoff on ATM. Uh, some of the biggest people are in uh, the, the, the globe that help fund it, Soros being one. Um, Alibaba in China being another, um, the Chinese Central Bank a third, uh, the Tata Engineering and um, Miscellaneous Products um, conglomerate. Lots of people helped to fund that and within I think one week of the announcement they grew their customer base by 10 million people in one, I think one week. So this is the way, this is the way they're trying to shepherd and herd the people to cashless payment, to digitalize money, which makes the following a reality. You cannot obtain money when you wish, you cannot spend it how you like or where you like. There is an electronic trail, a tag following you and every movement you make. So the anonymity between two individuals making a open exchange between each other is no more and will be no more if the globalist banking agenda pushes through. You have the ability to try and stop it. You should pay more attention to what's going on and I'll be bringing you more updates because what's happening at the moment is that only Australia and New Zealand and one or two other countries in the Commonwealth are calling for the cashless uh, convenience but also Norway too. So, depending on what happens maybe today with Italy's vote in the, um, the, uh, for the Euro referendum, that could be that there's more turbulence on the markets, for sure things are going to get worse, not better. So, pay attention, the IMF's agenda is for a one world currency, it's firmly on the table now and the wheels are rolling, coming towards you. So don't get caught out on it, make sure you do something about it. As I say, if you think it can't happen to you, then so did 1.2 billion people think the very same. So Peter of England signing off now. Thank you.